Hi, I'm Ian with OPT. If you're new to the world of astronomy, you might be surprised by the different types of telescopes that are available. Keeping a few points in mind will help you better understand what makes each scope type special. In this guide, we'll explain the different basic telescope types and why you'd consider choosing one scope over another. There are three main types of telescopes available. Refractors, which use lenses to bend the light into focus. Reflectors, which use mirrors that reflect light into focus. And catadioptric, or compound scopes, which use a combination of both lenses and mirrors. While you might hear other specific terms for telescope types mentioned, such as Dobsonian or schmidt cassegrain most of these other types are actually variants of the basic three, such as a Dobsonian being a type of reflector, or schmidt cassegrain being a type of catadioptric. While each scope type can be great in a variety of situations, they often have their own benefits that make them excel in certain applications. Firstly, we'll discuss refracting telescopes. These scopes utilize specifically designed lenses to focus the light into an image. Refractors are usually long relative to their size, as the light must flow in a straight path through the telescope tube to the eyepiece. The larger the lens in a refracting telescope, the longer the optical tube has to be to bring the image into focus. For this reason, refractors tend to be smaller and more portable than other telescope types. Now, there are some additional considerations you'll want to keep in mind when it comes to refractors. Depending on the type of lenses used for the optics, you may encounter visible color fringing at high magnifications. Also known as chromatic aberration, color fringing is when various colored wavelengths of light get split from each other and arrive at slightly different angles, showing up as an image with distinct coloration at the edges. Most low-cost refractors are doublets, which may have color fringing, whereas triplet refractors are designed to eliminate this issue. Still, whether a doublet or a triplet, refractors are solid, sturdy, and require very little maintenance. Next, we will discuss reflectors. Their use of mirrors causes light to reflect at various angles within the optical tube, which extends the overall light path. This often causes reflectors to be shorter than refractors of the same aperture, as the light doesn't need to flow in a straight line to move the same distance. Since manufacturing large mirrors is often cheaper than manufacturing large lenses, it is fairly common for reflectors to be much less expensive than refractors. Additionally, reflectors are not susceptible to color fringing in the same way that doublet refractors are. If you're looking for a lot of bang for your buck in terms of aperture, reflectors are a great way to go. This is especially true for Dobsonians, which come with their own easy-to-use rocker box mount. Reflectors can be a great value with many conveniences. They can also come in a variety of sizes and can get quite large. Because of this, Purchasing the largest reflector you can get is a great way to get a low-cost, large aperture telescope. Another consideration is that, by default, the image you see through the reflector's eyepiece will be upside down. For this reason, you'll want to use your scope's finder to line it up with the objects you want to see before looking through the eyepiece. Most modern reflecting telescopes come with a finder scope or a red dot finder, so you won't have to make an additional purchase to acquire this. Lastly, a reflector will sometimes require a process called collimation, which consists of adjusting the mirrors to make sure they stay in proper alignment with each other. When properly maintained, a large reflector is a great way to view small or far away objects with great clarity at a great value. Lastly, we will discuss catadioptric or compound telescopes. As previously touched upon, there are many variations on this design. Regardless of the specific build, Catadioptrics combine the optical benefits of both lenses and mirrors into a compact, convenient package. This makes them more portable than either refractors or reflectors of the same aperture. This is made possible by the corrector plate that folds the light path and the curved secondary mirror that magnifies the light internally. Since it uses mirrors like a reflecting telescope, catadioptric telescopes still require collimation. Unlike reflecting scopes, Catadioptrics require this collimation far less frequently. A well-maintained and kept catadioptric scope can maintain collimation for years. The catadioptric's small size and portability gives them a convenience not found in reflectors of the same class, making them a great investment for both beginners and experienced astronomers alike. So, which scope is right for you? Well, in most cases, you're going to want the largest scope 
that you can reasonably afford and carry. However, you might have specific needs that could make one telescope type better for you than another. If you're on a budget and just want to observe the moon and the various nearby planets, a small scope like a basic refractor is a great value. If you want to do deep sky observing of distant galaxies and nebula, you may want to consider picking up a large reflector. If you want a high degree of flexibility in what you observe, a schmidt cassegrain or other compound telescope will give you a lot of options for your viewing experience. Hopefully we've cleared up some of the confusion regarding the basic telescope types available. If you carefully weigh the benefits and considerations while keeping your budget in mind, you can choose the scope that's right for you where you can get the most enjoyment out of the night sky. If you have any questions or want to know more, feel free to contact us at OPT. We'd love to help you out. Happy observing.